What's going on folks? It's Jeremy with Care Services and Balamo Tutorials. Today we're going to continue with uh, decision structures and we're going to do a very simple decision structure with an else, uh, an if else statement and uh, just so you can see the difference of, I know I, I jumped ahead and done a case structure, the first one, but that was the one that was giving people trouble so I wanted to try to show that a little bit better. Um, I'm having trouble with my Visio, so I'm not going to actually show you how to build a flowchart with Visio yet. So if you still need that, uh, let me know and I'll help you with that. But uh, let's get started. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a very simple program that's going to ask for two rectangles. And inside the, uh, what it's going to do is display the two rectangles and say which one's bigger. And if this one's bigger, do this else if this one's bigger do this so that's basically what we're looking at here and uh, we're gonna take this program and we're gonna pseudocode it so let's let's break it down a little bit before I show you my pseudocode so you can kind of see where I'm going with this uh, when you do programming they always tell you to think modular to think how can you make it a little easier uh, sometimes making it easier overcomplicates it, but I've got two things I'll show you. I'm going to show you my, my pseudocode where I have broken down this actual program into having two functions. And inside those functions we have the parameters and, I'll, and we'll go over that. And then I'll show you the actual C++ program I just built that does not do the function, just does the simple display and inputs, and then goes into the calculations, then into the if else statement. A lot to go over, but we're gonna make it happen. So in this one, the area of a rectangle is the rectangle's length times its width. So you know you're gonna have, you know, area equals length times width. But we're gonna need two, because it's saying design a program that asks the length and width of two rectangles. So first we're gonna have two lengths, two widths, and we're going to have two areas. So a simple way of doing that would be to have uh, area one, area two, length one, length two, length width one, width two, something like that. So I'm, I'm pulling out as I go along the variables that I know I'm going to need. Then it's telling me right here I'm going to have a calculation and then this says two so I'm going to have two calculations. So that's two more things that we need to know that when we set up our area variable we can go ahead and set up the area one to length one times width one or length a times width a b or a whatever and then same thing for b and then this says the program should tell the user which rectangle which rectangle has the greater area or if the areas are the same here we're going to have an if else statement that's saying if area 1 is larger than area 2 then display area 1 is larger else if area 2 is larger than area 1 display the area 2 is larger else they're equal so there's going to be three statements that are going to be brought into this so we'll go over that and let's go ahead and get into the actual pseudocode alright here we're declaring the beginning of our statements main uh, Instead of putting main, I should have put area because when you know, I like the pseudocode as I as if I was building the actual program itself. That way, when I program the pseudocode, I'm basically just copying it, putting it over into a, a C++ uh, compiler, and then I change in you know, my display to C out, and I add my little uh, less than less than sign and my input. I do, you know, I go ahead and have all that ready to go. So. But in pseudocode and flowcharting, you should name your program. Always put the name of the program right here. So this should say area. Uh, next we have the declare. Uh, I'm using doubles. You can use float or I wouldn't use integers because if they were to use a decimal, it would automatically knock that decimal off and just round it down to the lowest. So instead of rounding up, if it's like a 1.6, it's still going to round it down. So I would just use like a double or a float. Or since you're using reals and programming the logic, intro to programming the logic, you can use real. It doesn't matter. All right, next I'm displaying. Now here's where you can get into uh, where I would segregate. I'm showing you the way that in this that I actually built my program here. This is the actual program built. 
and then here's the pseudocode for that. But in my flowchart, I'm going to show you how I uh, put those into functions to make it a little easier. But here we're displaying, please enter a length and width of your first rectangle separated, separated by space. And then you're inputting first the length, because here I'm saying please enter the, le the length. So I first input length and then width, width. And I'm just separating that by a comma just so that the program is just saying, hey, there's a space. This is what we're entering in. So the first number goes into the variable length one, the second variable into width one, and then I set area one equal to length one times width one. Then we move right along to asking for the second rectangle. Same thing, guys. We're going, or yeah, same thing. We're going length here to length two, width here to width two, and then we set area two. Then right here is where we do our calculation or our if statement of what we want done. So if the area 1 is larger than area 2, we want to display that your first rectangle has the largest area. Else if area 1 is less than area 2, and you can flip-flop this to do area 2 greater than area 1. I believe that's what I was reading off in the first one. It doesn't matter as long as you know, you've got the, the right uh, operator here. So that way you're not screwing yourself over when you get down to the end. But uh, So we do that. And if area 2 is larger than area 1, or area 1 here, as I have it, is less than area 2, we're displaying that the second rectangle is larger. Else, like in our case structure, the default would be your rectangle both have the same area. And then we end our program. So here is a very simple uh, pseudocode that, like I said, as I read it off, I was writing down on a piece of paper what my variables were going to be. I was going to need two lengths, two widths, two areas, and then I was going to need to calculate those two areas. So I knew that. Then I was going to need my if else statement. That way I knew what was going on. And we'll go to the flowchart and I'm going to show you how I broke this into a function. Okay. Here we, let's zoom in a little bit. Here we have the uh, start of the program like I said earlier, area, I'm declaring all the variables that I'm going to use, and then here you see that I'm calling to two functions. All right, so I'm calling rectangle A, and I'm passing in the length and the width that they're uh, uh, variables that we're using over here, and we're going to display. Uh, and the reason we're passing in a reference to the length and width is because they're going to change each time they go in and when they come out. Okay, so I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Anytime you pass in a, a variable that you're going to change, you can use the reference because you're referencing what it, what it is. You don't need to, you don't have to, you can just pull in the variable and change it. it uh, you know, references really do get confusing, but for this one I used it because I'm just passing in a variable that we're referencing from them out. Uh, here we're displaying, uh, and the same thing that we did in the first one, to enter in the uh, length and the width, and then we input it, and then we're returning the length and the width here, and I put it here, but, you know, you can do whatever, I mean, most teachers will tell you to return it inside your uh, return, uh, inside the function return right here. But I always put it here because you usually in a, in a program you're pulling those variables out and you have to put those variables back into the parameters of what you're using. So I like the column where they're supposed to be called. Same thing for a rectangle B here. I've built a little function here and returning the same thing except this time it's returning into the variable length one or length two width two and after we bring in these functions we set the variables just as we did and then here we go guys another connector except we're same page so we're doing the circle connector and I've marked it with A and then we follow along and then here's the A attachment connector that would says hey I'm next in line and then bam here is our now this is wrong okay and I'll, I'll tell you why right now but so what I did here guys is uh, when I exported this over I didn't realize that the exporter screwed up so I had to take it and do two things I should have corrected this before this tutorial 
but just so you see, these two here, these should connect and close out this if statement here, all right? Then when this one comes down, for some reason, they push down and I don't understand why. And then this one should come over here and connect. So if, if you hear about that and they, the teacher complains, that's why. And then, of course, it comes down to here. But that, that's what happened is for some reason these lines just got all jacked up and didn't close out right but technically this line should be up a little bit and then this one coming over should be connecting up to that one and that my friends is how you close out your if statement so here we're going to start our connector into our if statement and here as the pseudocode read if area one is greater than area two we're going to display this so this statement here would be true it would come down and end everything out. Else, if it's false, we're going to go here and do another decision. Now we're asking if area 2 is greater than area 1, then we're going to come over here. And notice, I'm keeping with the theme here. All my trues are on the right side, all my falses are going to be on the left side. So if this is true, we're going to come here, display your second rectangle in the statement, come over and we're done. If it's false, which means we went through both numbers and it's neither neither one is larger than the other, we're going to display you know, that your rectangles both have the same area and it's going to come over here to the closed if here. So see, if they say close your if statement, you've got to close each one. We've got two if statements. This if statement, if true, closes this down here, right? and would go all the way up into a box. This comes down to a second one, so you've got to close this if statement. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense about closing your if statements here and then closing the if statement here because this is still a part of this if statement. So once we close this one, then we need to close this one. Then we need to close the whole thing by coming down here to our end. And I hope that makes a little bit more sense and you can understand that one a little bit. If not, let me know and I'll, I'll try to slow it down. But let's go on over to C++ and check out that program. Alright guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this here and go ahead and call this a two-parter because as the time goes along, I'm going to run out of time and then you're going to be stuck in the middle of me you know, reverse engineering this or showing you how to reverse engineer and you know, you're going to be lost. So uh, let's go ahead and end this now, and we'll go to part two of the uh, of actually showing you how to break this down into a reverse engineered from program to flowchart, which most people like me, that's how you operate anyway. So, all right, we'll see you in part two. Remember, comment, rate, subscribe, guys. See you in part two.